Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, May 6th, 2022. I am Dave Biddle. I am very happy joined by Jonah Booker for his usual Friday visit. A little old school flavor here. We're recording the show late on Thursday night due to scheduling conflicts early Friday morning. Jay Book, a lot to get into, my man. Let's start with NIL madness. It is out of control. It's interesting. Some people hate it. Some people love it. Uh, some people are somewhere in between. Where are you at on this so far? I'm I'm the type of person that's kind of in between right now. There's aspects that, that I like about the NIL, and then there's aspects that I was like, oh, man, they need some type of guardrails because it's, it's essentially the wild, wild west. Like, one, I'm all for players getting paid. If, if the market is dictating this is how much they're worth, then I'm all for it. Um, for hundreds of years, a lot of players just been coming up and playing and the schools have been making a ton of money off the players. And now that the market is saying that they should be paid X amount of dollars, I'm all for it. I really appreciate the way Ohio State is going about doing uh, their NIL found the foundation because it's really setting the table how things I think eventually will happen across the board. You And we, we mentioned it last week on the Bucknuts Morning 5, the way Alabama – Ohio State and Clemson, Georgia, are going about where setting up their foundation to say, hey, once you're on campus, we can do X, Y, Z. And you look at Ohio State, you know, Travion Henderson is making a significant amount of money right now. You look at C.J. Stroud and Jackson Smith and Jigba with their offer with Express. I'm sure those guys are being paid handsomely. And then you look at some of the younger guys. Uh, Keon Gray's even got a deal with the foundation. So not only are they taking care of, of the upper echelon guys, but they're taking care of some of the younger guys. And then you add on to the fact that Ohio State will be giving kids, I think, $5,900 extra in bonus if they're meeting meeting their academic requirements. So there's a lot of money that's going around. What I don't like about the, the NIL and the way things are going is what you're seeing from Tennessee and USC and Florida and Texas A&M, where they're essentially – buying recruits is pay for play that's basically all they're doing and then the tampering aspect of it that process right there it really irks me because if it, it, it even though it could happen to someone like Pitt with Jordan Addison I can easily see the same situation happening at Ohio State who's to say Texas doesn't go at Evan Pryor and says I'll give you a million dollars after B. John Robinson leaves to come to Texas and be our starting running back, whereas Ohio State fans, we're looking at this kid thinking that he's the he's the heir apparent, he's the future of the Ohio State running back, whereas Texas can come in, tamper, and say, I'll give you a million dollars to come to UT right now. I mean, who's to say some type of tampering doesn't happen at Ohio State that will hit a national level? Now, we've all heard the rumors that some players on Ohio State's Ropper uh, rosters been tempered with that teams have reached out, but we really haven't seen that big mega nuke drop to where we see one of our backup players or our star players get offered significant amount of money to go play somewhere else. Now, next topic on the show here, um, the NCAA through sources, oh. they're, they're not saying anything, but through sources, there's been a lot of talk this week. <laughs> there's been a lot of stories written that the NCAA now is ready to crack down on NIL. I mean, can they? I mean, the Supreme Court, that ruling last summer, like really like right. makes them toothless here, but they're saying that they're going to try and crack down. They want to make it where like NIL is legal, like where if you're actually like doing a commercial for somebody or you're actually doing anything, like it's not pay for play. It's actually NIL as it was intended to be. That's fine. But the pay-for-play stuff is basically what it's turned into already. What, in your opinion, Jay Book, can the NCAA do, if anything, to crack down on this? Zero. There is nothing the NCAA can do. Once the genie came out the bottle, it's free reign. There's no way you can rope that back in and put it right back into the bottle because there's so many. I was reading, I think it was this week, there's 100-plus foundations that have popped up all across the country with NCAA schools and boosters uh, setting up foundations. So if the, if the NCAA wants to be able to get into business of 
uh, trying to police this. They first need to find an actual commissioner who has the guts to actually try to enforce it. But I, I, I have zero faith that the NCAA is going to be able to do anything. The best that they can actually do is say, hey, here are actual guidelines, which everybody from the start have been asking for. And everybody's from here on are expected to operate within these parameters and these guidelines. And even then, I don't even know if that even brings up an antitrust type of situation. As you mentioned, the Supreme Court, because a player could look at the NCAA guidelines and say, hey, this is this is un-American. This you are pretty much putting a cap on what the free market is saying I'm eligible to make. Will they take that to court? <laughs> and the way the NCAA performed in court over the O'Bannon cases in the last several cases, I have zero faith that the NCAA can actually win in court. Yeah, it's uh, I, know, I know they uh, are saying they're going to crack down. I, I agree with you. That's uh, easier said than done for sure. Let's get into some Ohio State recruiting. Um, Buckeyes landed Austin Siraveld the other day a four-star offensive lineman out of Lakota East. We're so used to saying Lakota West. There's been a lot of Buckeyes come from Lakota West. From Lakota East, young man, a uh, number seven overall player in Ohio. Again, a four-star offensive lineman. Really good year for offensive linemen in the state of Ohio, Jay Book. You got Luke Montgomery. You got Joshua Padilla. And now you got um, Austin Searvand all in the top seven. Like Montgomery, number one, Padilla, number three. Sirvan number seven. So you got uh, three of the top seven players in Ohio, all offensive linemen and all Buckeyes. We'll get to the rest of the class in a moment, but just uh, your thoughts on that recent commitment. Yeah, I like it. Um, it's another feather in the cap uh, for Fry. And I think it's very important that you keep the in-state talent home, especially uh, when you're going against Alabama, you're going against Notre Dame, which Ohio State was in that battle for this latest commitment so i i like the fact that ohio state they're able to keep um the top guys home you got your two guards in there you got your tackle in montgomery now the focus is let's go swing for the fences and go get that elite national offensive tackle because if you were if you were swinging and missing on the in-state guys that would be a major red flag. Now you feel good because hey, I got three off. I got three offensive alignment right now, and three solid in-state guys that are all four-star guys and above. Now let's go and see if we can find that that home run hitting five-star offensive alignment. So it's ability to be able to go on a national. All right, moving on. You cut out on me a little bit, but I think I, I got everything that you said pretty much. All right, let's get into crystal ball picks. I know Dan I think we might have hit on this. There. Yeah, we yeah, you cut, we cut out a little. I don't know if it was me or you, whatever. Like you know, one of us, right? Let's get into crystal ball picks. I know Dan Rubin got into this on yesterday's show. I want to get your thoughts on this. I love this. The Fong, Steve Wilt Fong, with the Fong bomb for five-star wide receiver Brandon Ennis. The number one wide receiver in the country in the 2023 class. Where have we heard that before, right? Julian Fleming, uh, right, you know, right? Emeka Ebuka. Now, Jackson Smith and Jigba probably should have been the number one wide receiver in the 2020 class, other than Julian Fleming, but whatever. Uh, we'll take it. Um, so the Fong puts in a crystal ball for Brandon Ennis to the Buckeyes. Then you have the Dean putting in a crystal ball for Tackett Curtis to the Buckeyes. Tackett Curtis, the number six linebacker in the country, number 56 overall player in the country. Man, I mean, you can pretty much lock it down when those two guys put a crystal ball in. This 2023 class is getting better and better by the moment. Yeah, it's it's really shaping up. And if you listen to Steve Wolfong, he was on the Bucknuts Morning 5 on Wednesday, uh, and he said that this Ohio State class has the potential to push for the top spot because he had Ennis in. Uh, he had Rodgers in as a wide receiver who he thinks is going to go to Ohio State, and he still believes Carnell Tate is going to be a Buckeye. And you mentioned – Tackett Curtis, he's a he's a thumper. I mean, you throw on his tape and he is absolutely laying people out. Some of us might be called targeting at the next level, but he's a heck of a linebacker. And then you all throw in John Walker, uh, the big defensive tackle from Florida, mm -hmm. uh, who's 310, 6'3, four star um, out of Kissimmee, Florida. So you look at him and you're like, wow, that's a massive big boy SEC type of defensive tackle that can really move. So I like where Ohio State's at, and 
Uh, you get the five star safety that's coming up for a visit. And a lot of people believe that that's going to come down to Ohio State versus uh, Alabama type of bout battle with Caleb Downs. A lot of people think that Ohio State has a slight edge there. And then you look at Mateo, um, the defensive end, five star DJ's brother out of California, Ohio State feel like they're they're right there in the mix for him. So I think this class has the potential to really be special at the very end. I know it's early May. A lot of people are asking where are those top national guys, but I would say this, just be patient. It's going to come. Last thing, big day, Bucknutters. And, J-Buck, I'm going to get your thoughts on this. So, like, we've been waiting for a while to interview the assistant coaches, like a long time. We didn't get to interview any of the position coaches during spring. We got to interview the coordinators and Ryan Day. They were very generous with their time and a lot of players. But the position coaches, we didn't get a chance to interview. Today, we will interview Jim Knowles. We have interviewed many times recently. Um, Justin Fry, we got him one time when he, after he got hired. Brian Hartline, haven't talked to him in a while. We're getting Mick Marotti. We're getting Tony Alford. We're getting Parker Fleming and maybe others later today at 11 a.m., J book again, Jim Knowles, Justin Fry, Brian Hartland, Mick Marotti, Tony Alford, Parker Fleming, maybe others. What are you interested in hearing from some of those guys? JB, you got me? Jonah, can you hear me? JB? Sorry, Dave. You broke up. I didn't get that last that last question there. Oh, I was just asking. Like, So we're going to get Jim Knowles, Justin Fry, Brian Hartline, Mick Marotti, Tony Alford, Parker Fleming, and maybe other coaches today. What are you looking forward to hearing yeah, I'm from having some those connections guys? issue. Yeah, can you hear me at all? Uh, I would just, you know, really want to hear where they where they feel the team is at right now, uh, especially Coach Mick. I would like to hear from Coach Mick to kind of get his feel on his thoughts on a lot of people questioning the strength and conditioning program. Um, as far as the defense, where does Jim know see the defense is at? How, how much further along do they have to go? And then just Tony Alford just talking about what he sees out of his top three running backs. That's something I'll be looking forward to listening to. All right, great stuff out of Jonah Booker. Thank you, my man. Sorry we had some uh, connect connectivity problems. Appreciate everybody tuning into the show. Thank you to J-Book. Thank you to all of our listeners and viewers. We appreciate it very much. Hope everyone has a great day and a great week.